Vivek Ramaswamy is the author of Woke Inc. He is uh, quite an amazing man uh, that uh, was at 20 years old, was a hedge fund partner. He founded multi-million dollar enterprises. He led a biotech company as the CEO. Uh, he is a, He studied to be a scientist at Harvard, a lawyer at Yale. Pretty much the guy you're like, all right, sit down, have a nap. You're making me look bad. Uh, he is uh, with us now. Vivek, how are you, sir? Good to talk to you. Glad to be here. Yeah. Thanks yeah. For me. Um, tell me, the, the book that you're doing is you're blowing the lid off of, of this woke scam. And uh, I don't know if you tie it into the Great Reset um, and, and <laughs> what Black Rock is or, or in, uh, with what Black Rock is doing, but um, it, it's, it's quite an amazing scam. It is. It is the defining scam of our century. And I didn't I wasn't born into elite America, Glenn, but I have lived in elite America for the last 15 years. And I'm revealing the scam of, of our time, which is that these companies in corporate America pretend like they care about something other than profit and power mm -hmm. precisely to gain more of each. And, and the problem is that that's not just a, an act of hypocrisy. It is wreaking havoc on our democracy because it demands that a small group of investors and CEOs determine what's good for the rest of society rather than our democracy at, law, at large. And that is fostering a new crisis of institutional mistrust in our country. It's mm -hmm. dividing our country to a breaking point as they're pushing a woke agenda that says your identity is based on your race and your gender and your sexual orientation. And that might make us better consumers to buy their stuff. But it leaves us worse off as citizens in the end. And, and that's what I'm exposing in the new book and hopefully also charting a better way forward for us. So tell me why companies like Nike, this this is the number one question people have. Why would they do this? Why would they uh, hold these? Why would Coca-Cola say be less white in their meetings? Why would they do that? Well, I'll tell you, Coca-Cola would rather talk about teaching their employees to be less white or issue statements about new voting law in Georgia that make it sound more like a super PAC than a soft drink manufacturer, for that matter, then it would talk about its own product's impact on a nationwide epidemic of diabetes and obesity, including, by the way, Glenn, in the very black community that they profess to care so much about. That is how this new game is played, where big business effectively blows woke smoke to cover up their actual business practices that they would rather not talk about. Wall Street mastered the game in the post-2008 era, Glenn, when you might remember, big business was the bad guy in the eyes of the old left. Yep. But what the new left found is there was this new what, – what, what big business found is there was this new woke left that said actually the real problem wasn't economic injustice. It was racial injustice and misogyny and bigotry. And that actually presented the opportunity of a generation for big business and for Wall Street in this country to say that if they could use their market power to push these woke values, if they could lend their legitimacy to this new woke movement, then they could actually go from being the bad guys – to becoming the good guys. And so what I talk about in the book is the story of how, you know, a bunch of big banks got in bed with a bunch of woke millennials. Together, they birthed woke capitalism, and they actually put Occupy Wall Street up for adoption. Silicon Valley then copies the act, effectively censoring content that the new left doesn't want to see online, but in return, expecting the new Democratic Party to look the other way when it comes to leaving their monopoly power intact. And it has worked so masterfully for Wall Street and for Silicon Valley that Nike and Coca-Cola and the rest of corporate America, as we know it, are following suit. And I think that that is the real threat to individual liberty and prosperity today, Glenn. I agree. It isn't just big government. It is this new hybrid of big government and big business that can do what neither one can do on its own. And yep. that, to me, is the defining challenge of our time. I, I think this is, you know, I've heard, I've heard big capitalists say for 25 years, you know, China's the new model. And I've always, I've always responded with, uh, I don't want that to be the new model, thank you. Um, but that's really what stakeholder capitalism is. Our, we as a shareholder in shareholder capitalism, I can go to the meetings, I can vote, et cetera, et cetera. But stakeholder capitalism, my only way in for a voice on that is who I elect. And we know how well Washington is working for us now. Exactly. And, and some people, you know, amongst Milton Friedman types, they may not like stakeholder capitalism because they think that politics infecting business makes business less efficient. And I share those concerns to some degree. I've been a CEO. 
But I actually am more concerned about the opposite, Glenn, is the way in which actually it allows big business to erode our democracy. In yeah, reverse. it makes it That's makes government. Of world Europe. It makes exactly. government more efficient because <laughs> they yeah, can't do absolutely. those things. Yeah, and, and, and it also imperils democracy because you convert this one person, one vote system that we have into a one dollar, one vote system mm. where a bunch of CEOs spouting off from Davos get to decide what's best for the rest of us. And, you know, stakeholder capitalism sounds like a very friendly title. In reality, what it is is a vector to advance values that empower the people who are at the top of that chain, but at the expense of democracy itself. And here's what the progressives don't realize, Glenn, is that once corporations become a vehicle to advance progressive agendas, which they are today, they become a vehicle to advance any agenda. And you put your finger on it before. They are advancing the agenda of the Communist Party of China because when companies like Nike and Disney do not say a peep about true human rights atrocities in China, while they continue to criticize the United States relentlessly, that creates this false moral equivalence on the global stage between the United States and and with China. When Twitter bans the 45th president of the United States but continues to allow the Taliban to tweet, it creates a false moral equivalence between the United States and the Taliban. And that attacks our greatest geopolitical asset of all, which is not our nuclear arsenal. It is our moral standing on the global stage. And these companies have turned into Trojan horses that are undermining those American interests from within, not just in our culture Uh, and in our democracy, but now in geopolitics. I am so glad that you have published this book. I am so glad that you've published this. I've been ringing this bell for a while, and, you know, people say, oh, that's crazy. No, it's not. It makes total sense that they would do this. It, they are gaining the money and power and not they, forget about America. It's one market to them. They're going for the exactly. globe. Exactly. And, and you think this is also a foreign policy disaster dating back 30 years in the United States where we thought we could use our money to get countries like China to be more like us, to spread democracy. Correct. And instead, countries like China have turned that on its head by using their money to get us to be more like them. And I am sorry to say it is working that exporting Big Macs and Happy Meals to other countries didn't spread democracy. (laughs) Instead, China has used Nike sneakers and Disney movies as Trojan horses, sending them back with their own values. And that is the reality of, of the painful lesson that we've learned over the last 30 years. One of the things I do in the book, though, is I lay out what I think is a better way forward, what we ultimately need to do to turn this tide. It will not be easy. But I think it is the defining challenge for not only the future of the conservative movement, but the future of the American movement as we know it. So, Vivek, how do we, uh, I mean, when you look, you mentioned the banking system. You know, you look at the, um, uh, the Paris Accords. That wasn't about global warming. That was about the banking system. That's all that of was. It was. Um, and so of course it was. when you have the banking system and this new ESG uh, rollout, you have complete control and shutting anyone down that stands against it. How are you how are you Absolutely. proposing? How do we get out of that? So, so what's happening right now, Glenn, is crony capitalism 2.0, and it's the mirror image of crony capitalism 1.0. In crony capitalism 1.0, what happens is companies – co-opt the government to do their own bidding effectively through an indirect bribe. What we see in version 2.0 is the reverse. The government is actually co-opting companies to be able to do through the back door indirectly what the government cannot directly accomplish through the front door under our constitution. So let's talk about climate change or climate addressing climate change as an issue that you raised. Right now, They could not get the Green New Deal through Congress. So what they're instead doing is John Kerry, the climate czar of President Biden, is boasting about this. He's using big banks on Wall Street to stop lending to any project that they feel does not comport with their agenda. Mm -hmm. That is using the back door to accomplish what they couldn't do through the front door, which is an affront to the Constitution. And I will tell you, big banks are not charitable institutions, Glenn. They do not do those favors for free. The real question is what they are getting in reverse. It is a reverse bribe. Same thing with big tech censorship. They say that these are private companies operating as private institutions. Well, guess what? Maybe if they're operating as private companies, they should be free to do what they want. But they're not. They are now doing the bidding of the federal government to take down misinformation and hate speech as defined by the party in power. Jen Psaki and Joe Biden are boasting about it. And worst of all, they're actually protected by this cloak of federal immunity called Section 230 that immunizes them from liability in the states for doing exactly that. 
And so my view is if it is state action in disguise, then the Constitution still applies. In the case of big tech, these companies still ought to be bound by the Constitution, the First Amendment, the Constitution and the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States when they are doing the selective bidding of the government and when they're protected by federal immunity to do it. That's an example of the kinds of solutions I trace in the book, looking back to the way in which government has actually used its power to empower certain classes of companies to do the bidding of big government and particularly the progressive wing of big government without the accountability that we have in our constitutional system with checks and balances. We have a government, however, that even without the private side is not following the Constitution, and it doesn't seem as if anyone really cares about it. They don't. They just think it'll always be this way. And everyone who has lived in a foreign country, especially a former Soviet bloc, uh, they are. They all see exactly what is coming, uh, and the exactly. American, the American people just don't see it. I, I want to continue our conversation here in in just a second. The name of the book that is out is Woke Inc. It comes out today. It is critical that you understand this is the problem. This is what we're fighting. We're not fighting a bunch of Marxists or anything else. I personally think the Marxists are useful idiots. Remember, I'm the guy that wrote Arguing with Socialists. I learned my lesson after I wrote that book. Wait a minute. That's not even the real target. The real target is government and business colluding. That's the structure. And it's a communist uh, model. And yeah, it sure looks an awful lot like socialism, but it's totalitarianism. Uh, and it is run by the corporations, the elite, all of the people that think they know better than you. Vivek Ramaswamy uh, is with us. He is the author of Woke Inc., Why I'm Blowing on How Corporate America is Poisoning Society. Um, you can't be very popular, <laughs> Ravek, <laughs> in the circles well, uh, that you... Have run in. I pissed off some some quote unquote powerful people. I will say in recent days as the book has come out, and uh, and I'm okay with that, Glenn, because unlike a lot of people, including myself, who years ago may have had to choose between putting food on the dinner table and speaking my mind openly, thankfully I've lived the full arc of the American dream now, and I don't have to really restrain what I have to say for fear of consequence. I, I thankfully started a company that ended up being successful. I have seen this from the inside, and so many people who have seen it from the inside would rather continue playing the game, wear hipster clothes, applaud diversity and inclusion, muse about the racially disparate impact of climate change after flying on a private jet to Davos. I can tell you it's not a bad life. I, I've seen what that looks like. But at the end of the day, somebody has to tell the story from the inside. And, and I'm not a journalist reporting on my findings. This is what I have seen from elite academia to big pharma to Wall Street to Silicon Valley, I have lived in those worlds. And at the end of the day, I think once the American people see what's going on, yeah, maybe their blood will boil. But I think that is also the first step to seeing the problem with clear eyes that allows us to chart a better way forward. So you are, um, I mean, you just said one of the bigger problems is a lot of people would just rather play along. Um, uh, you know, people, I think, feel powerless. And when you, they feel powerless over the government. But when you join the government with big tech and big corporation, what chance do you have? Absolutely. It's really hard where you have to ultimately make the choice between keeping your job today and speaking your mind. And I personally think one of the things I talk about in the book is I think that we need a legislative solutions that meet that unique challenge to liberty in 2021. Not just reciting some slogan we memorized in 1980 saying the free market can do no wrong without recognizing that the free market that we idealize doesn't actually exist today. No, we need to apply new dogmas to address our present challenges. And so, so one of those for me is really simple. I think we should add political belief as a protected class right up there next to race, sex, religion, national origin, and sexual orientation in the civil rights statutes. And you know, if you want to have a conversation about whether that's actually one more constraint on a business that we shouldn't want to apply, I think that's reasonable if we get rid of protected classes altogether. But a lot of the solutions that I propose in the book is, I think you can't have it both ways. Either we trust the market and the truly free market to address all forms of discrimination evenly, or we have to apply those standards evenly to say that if you can't discriminate against somebody or fire somebody or deplatform somebody, 
just because they're black or gay or Muslim or Christian or Jewish or whatever, you should not be able to fire or deplatform them just because they're an outspoken conservative either. And that is not an academic issue. It is happening every day in this country, directly or indirectly. If it can happen to the 45th president of the United States, it can literally happen mm. to anybody. And so I think these are the kinds of solutions we need to meet our moment. Give me, uh, uh, we have two minutes. Give me a final uh, pitch to somebody who kind of really doesn't doesn't get it yet. They're like, ah, I don't know if that's as bad as they're making it out to be. Sounds like a conspiracy yeah. theory. Well, I think it's not a conspiracy in the sense that you can see it in plain sight. You look at the ways that companies do business here in the United States and criticize the United States while they're doing it. Ask those same businesses if they're criticizing slavery in the United States 250 years ago, then why are you not reducing your reliance on slave labor in China today? And if you think that that isn't the CCP behind the scenes pulling the strings directly, you can actually look at hard facts that prove they are. Airbnb posts a nice black square on its corporate Instagram account and says it stands in solidarity with Black Lives Matter here in the United States. While it uses that to win your trust, to give them your data, and they're handing that over to the CCP as a condition for entry into the Chinese market, Mm -hmm. details that I detail in my book. So this is a game in which the American consumers are being played, American citizens are being played. But Glenn, the right answer isn't to cancel wokeness in return. It is to dilute it to irrelevance by reviving a shared sense of American identity that runs so deep that it really dilutes wokeism to nothing. And, And I think if the last decade was our decade of celebrating our diversity and our differences, then so be it. Let the next decade still be about celebrating what binds us together as one people. And I think that that's actually the ultimate solution is a cultural revival of that American identity. Uh, I talk about at length in the book. I love you. Thanks for having me and hope you read the book. You bet. I I love you. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, the name of the book is Woke Inc. It just became available today. It is well worth your time. Might want to buy a couple of copies and give one to a friend. You want to understand what's going on? Here's a great place to start. Woke Inc. Available everywhere.